I'm going to tell you a secret. Can you keep a secret? So can I. That's why I'm really not going to tell you. No, I will tell you because uh, even if I do, it's still a secret. Have you seen how many people watch these videos? <laughs> Ancient Native American pottery is not clay pottery. It's sand pottery. Well, the clay just binds the sand together. Which is stronger? A grain of sand or a piece of clay? Which one can you break easier? So it's sand pottery. And the clay is just the glue that holds it together. So you just have to have the right mix because you're really trying to make a piece of pottery out of rock. show you another way. So this is going to separate. There's hardly anything in here that's really large. It's only going to let the fine pieces through. Leave me with some very nice fine sand. This is probably the fastest way to get the best quality sand that I want. But of course, if you're uh, living free out in the wilderness, you may not have any of this. So don't worry. <laughs> no big deal. Use what you have. If you don't have it, use a more primitive method. I, I want a like basically a finger bowl to dip my hands into while I'm working the clay so I can rinse them off and they don't get all sticky from the clay. Ideally, I would do this you know, beside the creek or the river where there's a little pool of water and I always just have a pool of water that I can use for multiple purposes, for washing my hands, for putting water on the clay. But we're under you know, drought conditions here, so I mean, it, it hardly ever rains, and this entire riverbed is empty. So the clay is almost completely a fine powder now. I'm going to try to guess how much sand would make the size of the pot I want to make and how much clay is going to bind that together. Doesn't look like enough clay to me yet. Add water. See if it sticks. The exact mix of uh, of clay sand and water is very experimental but just remember this is a sand pot so 
Um, so you want to uh, want it to feel very gritty. First of all, you want your hands damp all the time. I'm going to make okay a platform, basically the base of the pot right here, because I don't want to accidentally get the bottom too thin. So if I just make the bottom of the pot first and establish how thick I want that to be, uh, then theoretically it doesn't get too thin. So. I think the problem with that is It uh, falls apart a lot more easily than commercial clay. about pretty much more or less what my cereal bowl is going to look like. <laughs> so this is something you could dip water out of a creek with, but it's you know, certainly not a water jug. And that's it for today. process from getting the sand and grind you know crushing the clay and mixing it together mixing it with water and making that little dish it took about an hour and a half would have been uh, less time than that if I hadn't been fudging with cameras but I'm just now I'm gonna wait a day I'm gonna come back tomorrow and the dish should be dry and then I would fire that uh, and the way I'm gonna fire it the way I would fire it, take another day. So, three days max to make a really simple dish like that. So, you could take a lot longer if you wanted. I mean, you could build part of it, let it dry, build more of it on top of that, you know, and make a really big uh, container. But I'm just telling you, in, you know, two to three days, you can have a container to, you know to, to use on the fire to prepare your food or whatever and that's just a little sample there now you can see that around the edge there's there's a lot of rough edges that once it's fired would be sharp and so forth see before it's fired it hasn't been uh, hardened yet see I can scrape it a little bit and I can actually smooth it down be very careful because I don't want to break my pot I can I can still just crush it it's all you know all it's it's mixed the way I want it so I can crush it and get it wet again and reshape it if I break it but of course I don't want to do that so I'm gonna smooth out all these really rough edges see with this uh, with, with this rock I can, I can make it like I want and then I'm gonna put a thin layer of clay I'm gonna basically finger paint a layer of clay over it to get it smooth. I'm gonna sand. It's literally what I'm doing is sanding the edges, 
move down the top edge anywhere where it just you know where there's some protrusion that just sticks out and sand it all down and smooth it out I'm being very gentle I'm not pressing on the pot at all I'm just letting my uh, let my rock do the work of sanding the pot down I'm going to sand pretty much sand down the entire surface of this bowl before I'm all done here before I as I said paint over the top of it with clay looks pretty good it's a huge improvement over the way it was so now all I'm gonna do get a little bit of water on here And here we go. I just want a thin layer. I'm painting. Put it that way. <laughs> okay. So I'm painting a very thin layer because I want to try to make this bowl smooth on the outside. So everything is uh, pretty much smoothed down, and as as the clay, because it's just a thin layer, it will dry quickly. As it dries, I look for rough spots and just get a little moisture on my hand and try to smooth down those those rough spots the best I can. So that the total, you know, the overall pot is as smooth on the outside as I can make it. Now, my outer layer here is cracking as it dries, which may mean that I put it on too thick, but I think, I think there's a remedy for that. Now is probably the best time to finger sand this because of that cracking, just pushing little particles into those cracks. And now, taking young willow leaves, after I've sanded it by hand and gotten most of those cracks filled in, and I'm using the willow leaves, leaving a green tint on the outside of this container and making it very smooth. Okay, so now we've got a green pot on the outside, red on the inside. If I see any continued cracking on that outer coat of clay, keep uh, rubbing it with my fingers to, uh, to fix the little crack. You can see little tiny minute cracks rub it to fill it in. So that means it's uh, just about time to to make a fire. The days are getting cold Soldiers getting tired and Workers getting fired and Children getting